Oftentimes leaders will ask, how can I get team members to work together better with each other? Leaders may say they, they interact great with me and when they go to work with each other, especially to solve a problem or to come up with a new option or create some new alternatives, sometimes it's not going that well. So today we're gonna to talk about two things that are gonna be important to help with this. And uh, I'm, I'm here with my favorite piece of equipment, which is a dry erase board, so we can, we can draw some pictures and talk about this. All right, so one thing that happens a lot in organizations is a leader is sometimes, unfortunately, even if they don't intend to be, they'll be at the center of the conversation. What that kind of looks like from a graphical representation is person A will talk with the leader, and then person B will talk with the leader, and C, and so on. And what's happening here is instead of it being a interplay of conversations, you really can kind of have a bunch of one-on-one -on -one conversations where other people are just sitting in the room or perhaps they're listening or contributing. This isn't what you want. What you really want to do is to say to team members, okay, yes, I am here and I'm expecting all of you guys to talk to each other. So it's not a one-to-one, -one, it's a many-to-many -many relationship and all these pieces are filled in and everybody's talking with everybody and I'm sure I've left some pieces out on accident here. You get the idea. Everyone's talking to everyone. So as you, as you are the leader and you're talking with the team about, hey, you guys are gonna work together to solve a problem, it may even be kind of helpful to, to draw this up. So what you can do is begin to minimize and even at some point you may just completely remove yourself from the conversation so you're out here and all these folks are having these great conversations without your direct involvement. So that's the first concept. The second concept that I wanna play with with you guys today is, is this one, and I like this one a lot. Oftentimes when people are asked to come up with something new or come up with something creative, there's not enough direction on, on where there's wiggle room, where there's space to play. And so in, in talking about this with leaders, I, I've got this little diagram, and it's one of my favorite things to draw. We often will say to folks, we'll think outside the box, and we'll, we'll represent that with this, this lovely little box here. Okay, great. Well, what the hell does think outside the box really mean? A lot of times people aren't sure, because what this box really represents is, oh, this may be our uh, budget, or this are the team members. That person's got extra arms. These are the team members who we're playing with to get this done. Or this is the amount of time that we have to, to do this. Or these are the resources and the buildings that we've got and the factories that we've got that we can use to, to get this done. My buildings stink. You get where I'm going with this. Here's what's more helpful. When you're saying to folks or saying to your team or even thinking for yourself, gosh, how do I come up with something different and I, and I wanna think outside the box, well, what the hell does that actually mean? Well, here's what you can do. Begin to say to yourself, okay, where have I got wiggle room? Where can I change things? Well, I know. Hey, we, yeah, we're gonna use this person and that person, that's great. We've also got some space here. And when it comes to budget, yeah, we've, we, maybe these are constraints. Maybe this piece though, we have some flexibility. And when it comes to this aspect, we've got actually more flexibility than we realize here. And maybe over here, there's just a little bit of space for us to play. And we'll just say there's a little bit here. Now what you get to do is to paint a much clearer picture for people so that you can say, hey, this is where you have hard constraints. So these pieces that are in blue, like those are set. Don't, don't mess with those. And in these other places, you have space to play. So here, someone may say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out like this. How does that look? Oh, that looks great, or that'll work, or ooh, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. We had never considered that before. So what's fun now is you've got a, again, this is a fun little visual way to represent things that may or may not work. You've got a way to give people far better space to say, this is where you can play, and these are the parts of this situation. These are parts of the parameters that we're working with that are really set. What's really fun is when you combine these two pieces together. Now, if one person's in charge of finance or, or the schedule, another person's in charge of team members, another person is really bringing uh, resources to the table, 
Now, when they begin to pull these two concepts together, now the person in different roles may say, well, how would this work? Well, this would work great. Well, what about this? Well, what's our real restriction with that? So as you encourage these kinds of conversations, it's also important that how team members work together is really well nailed down, is really well established, and that that safety is in place for team members. So play with these two concepts, see what works for you. If you've got other ways to help team members be more creative that can, uh, can augment this or add on to this, we'd certainly love to hear it. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe. And also let us know if you're interested in joining our Wingspan weekly email. We've got email that goes out with videos like this and other uh, items each week. Thanks.